Hi and welcome to Sadie's Spincraft. So we're back to another breed study. Let's, let's nip into the comb top breed study box and pick some out. I'm not even gonna look, I'm just gonna grab some up. What's that? White South Down. So we're going for South Down this time. So let's get that out. Oh, I like the feel of that. Now we need. Oh, yeah, oh. These heads. Um, I these heads the we did about that last time, didn't we? I don't know how. Oh, that's. That's actually quite soft. I'm. I'm ooh. I like South Down, I think. We may have a new one to play with. Well, anyway, right, we've got about 20 grams, like I say, I can't, I can't, um, what do you call it, weigh it right now simply because I need to get some new batteries for my scales. So, uh, put that over there. <laughs> so we've got this much, I'm going to take half of it. There we go, so half and half, and I'm going to spin half as it is. I don't know why I'm shouting at you. I feel like I've got a shout over my arm. Um, and then, excuse Hunter, he's playing on his PlayStation. He makes some random noises. He really does. So anyway, hang fire. So, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, I'm a wanted lady. Uh, anyway. And then this bit is going to go into the jar and I need to pick a colour for it. So that's what I'm going to get sorted. We're going to get the jar sorted and we're going to get some vinegar, some hot water and some dye. And we're going to shove it into the jar and just let it do what it needs to do. So I'll be back in a sec. So we've got the usual hot water and whatever you call it, vinegar. And we're going to have a bit of delphinium. Chrissy, you're in it whether you like it or not. We've got a bit of delphinium <laughs> oh. to go in. This might break, so I'm going to see if we can do a few grains like I did last time. Look at that! I love delphinium. I love it that much, I want it a bit deeper. Right, I've, all, all I've done is dip my spoon and I'm just gonna mix that now. Is that not just the nicest blue you've ever, ever come across? I love delphinium blue. And I can't get out of anymore, so I'm trying to be sparing with it. Right, so like before, we're just gonna put it in. It's taking a bit more to soak up but I think that's because it's softer it's definitely softer I'll give it that so in goes the delphinium I shall leave that to work its magic while it cools down let's uh, get set up to read this this information on this uh, south down woohoo Right, do apologise for Hunter in the background, don't worry about it. So, to the Fibre Bible we go. Let's have a gander at this. I have found it already. South Down, let's have a gander. So, among the Down family members, the South Down is a grand ancestor. The breed from which the other Down breeds were developed and thus warrants our attention at the beginning of this section. Uh, I really didn't want to have to read all that, so we're not, we're just reading this bit. That's what the first section is on about, I do believe. Um, from medieval times, there are records that short, wooled, black-faced, speckled-legged sheep <laughs> were found on the South Downs, an area along the English Channel, encompassing Hampshire and Sussex counties. 
Some historians believe that the first sheep to arrive in the Jamestown colony in Virginia in 1609 came from these flocks. In the 1780s and 1790s, several breeders began improving these animals for better mutton production. They produced very high quality meat. By the late 1790s, the improved Southdowns have become the most important breed in England. As Juliet Clutton Brock says in 200 Years of British Farm Livestock, throughout the 19th century, the Southdown was the central element on every Sussex hill farm. The Southdown's drawback was that it was a relatively small animal at maturity, so breeds, breeders quickly began using the improved Southdown for crossbreeding with the native stock in their downland countries. The improved, South, improved Southdown's bloodlines therefore run through all the other down breeds. Today, put my teeth back in. Today, there are different types of Southdown sheep with the distinctions between them based on size. One is a medium sized animal still used in commercial agricultural. One is the much smaller baby doll Southdown and third is the miniature or toy Southdown. The latter is a recent type developed by breeders in the 1990s who used se selection to get a sheep that is less than 24 inches 61 centimetres tall. That's cute. I might get one for me at the Withers. Uh, all types of docile and easy to handle with rather affectionate dispositions. The baby doll and miniature South Downs are largely raised as pets and for fleece. Yeah, I think I might have to get a miniature. I can have it in my house and, uh, and train it. <laughs> but today's standard South Down is first and foremost a meat breed, producing a lean yet tender carcass with good taste and doing so with high feed efficiency. In other words, they produce a lot of meat in relation to what they are given to eat. The South Down may have been the foundation of the Down family, but it gave way to a number of other breeds that are still important in the sheep world. In fact, Suffolk's and Hampshire's have become some of the most common sheep in North America. Harry, will you get down? <laughs> right, South Down facts. Fleece weight. With a lot of size variety among the different strains of South Down, estimates range between four to six pounds, which is 1.8 to 2.7 kilogram. Um, or up to 7 to 12 pounds, 3.2 or 5.4 kilograms. Middle ground gives a working average of 5 to 8 pounds, yields 40 to 55 percent. Staple length, 1.5 to 4 inches, mostly 2 to 3. Fibre diameter, 23 to 29 microns. So yeah, it is quite a fine fleece. They're pretty medium, but I'd say it's, that's not a medium. Anyway, um, for white, 27 to 31 for the black. Nah. Uh, lot characteristics, dense, resilient, medium grade fleece with blocky, Rectangular staples that hold together and may be hard to distinguish from each other. Natural colours are white. There may be a few black fibres because down breeds have coloured faces, but any off colour fibre fibres lower the commercial value of the wool. There are some coloured South Downs. I'd love a coloured South Down. I would buy that colour South Down fleece. And I'm sure a lot of you lot would as well. Uh, dyeing these wools dye nicely. Well, we'll find out, won't we? They aren't lustrous, but the colour won't be flat. That's fair enough. We'll find that out as well. Fibre preparation. These are nice, versatile medium, 
handling wools. I'm wondering if it's different from working from fleece to working from prepared comb top. So when I've done this comb top one, I might have to buy the same breeds but in fleece. And it might be different. Well, we'll see. We'll see. I'll see what I can do. And it can be used in knitting, crochet and weaving. Great for socks, mittens, hats, everyday sweaters. So it is all right for next at skin. Uh, yeah. I'm not going to read this because I can't be bothered. But if you want to read it, hang on. We'll put it there. Hang on, hang on. We'll take you off there. Oh. If you want to pause it, you read it because I can't be bothered. There we go. Right. I'll be back shortly when this is dyed. Although I've got a feeling we're nearly there. But we'll leave it to cool and then we'll go from there. Beautiful, is it not? And then we'll get them both made into Rolags and we'll start spinning and we'll see what we think once we've been spun. But as of feel straight from here, I would say, yes, I'm going to buy it again and it reminds me of Carmo in a way. So we'll see. Let's, uh, yeah, I'll be back once this is done and I've got it dried. I ain't even been able, hang on, I ain't even been able to set up the camera. I got so excited about this, right? So we've got this and we've got the dyed. Watch this, right? I've never noticed this before, but it goes to show once you dye comb top that's come from a mill, because it's been stretched and stretched, once it gets dyed, look at that. Look at that shrinkage, right? So it's the spring. Got no spring in that at all. We out actually drafting it and pulling it apart. This, watch. I'm not even, look at that. And I'm nowhere near pulling that apart. And it's not felted or out like that. Like, wow. So anyway, now we're gonna go and put this these into Rolex. <laughs> So I've got the Rolex. I didn't bother filming it because I don't think you need to see every week's um, Rolex. Maybe you do. Some might. Let me know if you want to see the Rolex making. <laughs> I do have... Where is it? See how this goes. Right, usual knot. Gotta move it. There we go. I've got too much tension again. See, it's going to be a working thing because I'm not used to it still. Yeah, that one should be all good. But it 
is spinning absolutely stunning for me. I reckon if I were on Kromsky and not Gwen right now, I'd have flown through these Rolex. Because they're wonderful. So I'm going to get it set up so that you can see it in quick time and then yeah we'll go from there. Now we're on the blue, so yeah, I'm just going to quickly fast forward it all. So that's the blue finished. I'm just gonna take the tension off. I forgot to press record, but you know, life's life and said it, said it. So I'm gonna get this off here and then we will, I'll be back with you to do my conclusion. So my conclusion. One, just bear in mind if you're spinning this uh, straight from comb top or and not dyeing it, when you wash it, it will be a lot shorter. Um, but it does have a lot of stretch in it. Look at that. Not as much. Oh, I don't know. You still got quite a bit of stretch. It natural, but once again. When it's washed, it does fluff up, as we've noticed twice now that the dyed has been thicker than the natural. I will say, in my opinion, this South Down does spin better in Rolex dyed than undyed. So maybe that's different from fleece as well. I really am gonna have to include fleeces in this breed study and maybe spinning from comb top as well hunter can you just stop doing that a sec thank you darling so yeah um really 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 think i'm gonna have to do comb top so i might have to revisit dorset horn and spin it from comb top both undyed and dyed and also revisit south down straight from comb top dyed and undyed um also from fleece so there's another two ways to do this and i think i'm gonna have to add them all at some point because you can't get 
a true gauge I'll spun my hair into it a true gauge of just doing one prep if you get catch my drift and just getting from a uh, comb top from what do you call it a mill prepared comb top because they with the way they clean their fleece is completely different to a hand spinner cleaning just one fleece we can spend time um, we don't have to use such hard cleaners either to get all the landling out we get to choose how much landling stays in so on and so forth so yeah we're gonna have to include these little things but definitely will be buying this again I really do really really like South Down um, so these will be getting added into the breed weave that's what I've decided to call it a breed weave <laughs> um, so I got excited then <laughs> so yeah breed weave and it's gonna start obviously with the Dorset Horn then the South Down and then whatever comes next and then we'll do the second part of the weave with the comb top spinning so we'll have woolen worsted and then straight well not straight from fleece but fleece and we've got the colors written down so we can do the same color uh, variations as well Ooh, I think I'm quite enjoying this breed today right now. I really am. So, yeah. Sadie so is going to buy this again. I really enjoyed that. So, I hope you all enjoyed this breed, uh, South, this breed study, South Down, with me. Um, if you have any questions, comment below. If I don't know the answer, I can more than likely point you in the right direction to get the answer that you're looking for and uh, yeah if you are new to the channel don't forget hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell so you don't miss any more random uploads 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 not uploads yeah so we're gonna go for random uploads <laughs> and I hope you'll join me again for part three of the breed study so that we can get this down so yeah i think i'm gonna have to buy some more comb top at some point i think i've got some border lester which i haven't i'm not sure i'll have a look i'll have a look so no matter where you are in this world whether it's morning afternoon evening or night time i want you to do what you love doing love and hugs to all you fantastic people out there and I will definitely see you all again very soon. Bye, my beautifuls. Mwah.